Yo, what is up guys? My name is Red Cloud. Today we're going to be learning how you guys can use your AMD graphics cards to encode on OBS and Streamlabs OBS. So I am a Twitch streamer. If you guys want to check out my stream, it's twitch.tv slash redcloud. And honestly, if you guys have any comments or questions after this video, feel free to stop by and ask me there and I'll definitely do my best to answer your questions. Anyway, let's get right into it. All right, I'm going to take this nice and slow so you guys can learn what we are specifically doing here. What we're doing is we are adjusting Streamlabs and OBS so we can use your graphics card instead of your CPU to encode. That way we take the load off of your CPU, which directly affects how you enjoy your games and that lag feeling. And we're using it on your graphics cards, which are actually able to encode really well, especially now that graphics cards are much faster. And also, they are kind of actually meant to uh, encode. They, they already do that with gaming. So that's what we're going to get into today. So let's get right into uh, one thing first, uh, which is uh, the output. So this is the most important part here. Um, this is what your OBS is going to look like. It's going to be on simple. And this will be defaulted. Uh, when you first open up your settings, it might even ask you to run a auto configuration. And if you do run the auto configuration, it's not the end of the world. You can change those settings regardless. But it's it would be very surprising if it actually auto configured it to run it on your graphics card. So instead of simple, what we're going to do is we're going to go to advanced and we're going to toggle that right there. And so we're going to be on the streaming tab. So the encoder is going to be on X264, uh, which is your CPU. And what we're going to do is we're going to click that and head over to the AMD Advanced Media Framework. And bam, we're on an H264 encoder, which is basically encoding off of your graphics card. So if you want to rescale your output from your video, whatever, your, whatever resolution you're streaming at, um, you could do that but I keep it on um, the video output that I'm trying to record at and stream at, so that's what I do. Um, the preset should be on something like this, which is the default one. So what you want to do is you'll want to go to preset and hit Twitch streaming, and then the quality preset, you want to leave this on balanced unless uh, you have like a much higher end AMD card, like a XT57. I don't know. It, it's just the better cards on AMD. You'll know if you know. But if you don't know, just keep it on balance. There's no loss here. Like It's a safe bet. And honestly, that's what you should keep it on. Personally, I have an AMD RX 560, which is really not that good for gaming and really not that good for what I'm doing. But I still manage to not drop that many frames on stream. And I manage to play lower tier games that like you know, don't require a lot of um, headroom on these uh, to run. So yeah, balance is pretty good. The pre-pass mode, you can leave that disabled. The constant bit rate, just leave it as is because as is, you can't change it. The target bit rate, you should know what your upload is before you start messing with this specifically. If you guys want to run on Google a um, internet speed test, I would go ahead and do that. If you have anything over, I'd say about seven or eight upload, you should be able to upload at 6,000 bitrate. Basically, what the 6,000 means is every 1,000 is one megabyte. So if you have 10 upload, 10 megabytes of upload, that means that you could potentially stream at 10,000 bitrate if no one else was using your upload speed, which is rare um, unless you live alone or unless you have like your own private, you know, split off internet in your home, which is something that I have personally. Um, so basically, if you are a Twitch streamer and you are only an affiliate or you're not an affiliate, which is probably going to be the majority of you guys, you can only stream at maximum 6,000 bitrate. That's what Twitch caps our bitrate at. And it's not bad, but you know, if you're partnered, you can stream at 10,000. Or if you're on YouTube, you don't even have to be partnered to stream at 10,000, which is also a really good. Um, thing to know if you want to go for like high quality streams. Um, personally, 
I stream at 6,000, like I said, because my internet allows it. I only get 12 upload, so I use half of my upload to get the 6,000. So I keep it at 6,000. Um, if you have anything like five or below bitrate, or as far as like your upload speed goes, I would potentially just keep this at like 3,500. At 720p, this looks pretty good. Uh, the further you go, the higher you go, the better obviously it's gonna look. So if you have 4,000 or 5,000, that's definitely still okay. And I would definitely suggest doing some test streams on like what your internet can handle. And definitely don't be afraid to just like stream to nobody and just like do a test stream here and there. So yeah. So once we hit apply, all of those uh, settings will be here. And the same thing applies basically for <laughs> my dog is <laughs> trying to like get my attention. So basically the same thing goes for the recording as well. Um, you can hit over here. This will be on X264. Go to AMD H264. I've never tested the H265. So I would suggest sticking to, um, you know, what I can vouch for. The preset, you can change this to near lost recording or Twitch streaming and just set this bitrate to, you know, 15,000. Um, 15,000 allows you to get much higher quality at a bigger file size. And since it's not uploading anywhere and it's only encoding at 15,000, that means your quality on your video will be really, really good. But like I said, this is only for recording, not for streaming. For streaming, you can only stream at 6,000 or less uh, if you're not partnered, like I said, on Twitch specifically. Um, now, what I do as far as uh, video goes, um, if you guys would want the best, um, in my opinion, the most standard and most like easily accessible stream quality for other people to watch your streams, uh, if you're not partnered, that is, um, is a 720p stream. Uh, basically, a 720p stream allows you to get really good quality on YouTube and on Twitch. Uh, it can be, you know, upscaled to 1080p if you are making YouTube videos. And it doesn't look, um, you know, it doesn't look terrible because, like, it's the same ratio and it's just, like, doubling the, the frames. I'm not the frames, I'm sorry, the pixels. So it's really, it doesn't look that bad. Uh, if you guys can see my bearded dragon back there, he's jumping around. Um, so basically, yeah, the base canvas is uh, 1280 by 720. The output scaled is uh, 1280 by 720. And the downscale filter here is by linear fastest, but blurry if scaling. The if is very important here because we are not, um, we are not scaling. We're keeping the same resolution. This allows CPU and your GPU to take it, you know, a slightly easier load off just because you're basically not making OBS like, you know, double frames or double pixels and all that stuff. So definitely, definitely always keep your canvas and your output at the same ratio. Um, so that's about it. I keep my FPS at 60. You could also you know, if you wanted to do this at 50 or 45, whatever you want to do here, um, I would definitely suggest not streaming at 30 FPS. Um, if you have to literally, like if that's all you can do, do it obviously, but 60, anything past 45 is definitely the golden the sweet spot for sure. But 60 is definitely the standard. Um, and the same thing would apply technically if you're doing this on, you know, 1920 by 1080. Or the same thing here as well. This would show 1920 by 1080 if I tick that. So if you want to stream at 1080p, you can. But I've had multiple people in the past two years that I've been streaming tell me, hey, Red, like, you know, my phone's really not that good. So I kind of lag when I watch your stream because, like, some phones, they can't actually watch 1080p videos. Like, it's just not an option for them. I had a phone, like, a few years ago uh, that would not work and watch 1080p videos. I have to watch YouTube at 720p. It sucks, but the good thing is that you're streaming at 720p. It, it doesn't like, you know what I'm saying? Like it allows other people to watch your stream and it's still, you know, it doesn't suck. It just, you know, it's not 1080p. So it is what it is. So here on the advanced tab, the process priority is normal as well as the renderer, all that stuff. This is not important uh, unless you want to add a stream delay. 
uh, or, you know, check your recording and all that stuff, like change the file size or file names and stuff. That's up to you. Um, that's about it. As far as audio goes, don't mess with this. You, you definitely don't need to change the sample rate or anything like that. Uh, you don't need to change. What, what else is it like? I don't even know. Like you, you don't need to change audio whatsoever. It's not important. Um, uh, here, like the one audio bit rate and stuff, just leave that as is not important to mess with. Um, that is about it, guys. And, you know, if you guys have any comments or questions, uh, definitely let me know. I am a Twitch streamer. Like I said, I am live every single day at Twitch TV slash Red Cloud. So if you guys want to check me out there, I definitely would suggest doing so. If you guys learned a lot and if you guys definitely, you know, want to show me that you guys appreciate the video, give it a thumbs up. Seriously, would appreciate that. Also, go ahead and subscribe if you guys want to. I would definitely appreciate it. We are trying to hit 500 subs by the end of November. Um, so, yeah, guys, thank you guys again. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.